camels possess a hidden weakness, an Achilles heel. Now they have a legendary resilience. They can go for weeks without water, carrying heavy loads over burning desert while their human companions are dying of thirst. They'll walk and walk and walk for leagues. And then one day they just collapse without any warning. And human beings possess a similar Achilles heel. We can rally. We can rally in the face of pandemics and war and economic crisis, personal loss. We rally and we rally. And then one day our soul says, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And you do not want to push your soul to that point. But everything about the hour that we're living in is pushing our souls to that very point. Welcome. I'm John, and I am delighted to spend this series with you. I have so much to say, so much that we need to know about this hour that we're living in and the counsel of Christ for us. So much so that I wrote a book called Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. And this series is born out of that. And what we want to explore is the resilience that God imparts to the human soul. Now, yes, in many ways, the world has always been a turbulent place, right? I mean, you read history and it's war and famine and heartache and loss, and yes, beauty and goodness and love too, but the world is a stormy place. But there is something about this hour that I want to explain to you. First, modern life, for the last 30 years, has been really draining on the human soul. I mean, what we consider to be a normal pace of life, the amount of media that we take in, the amount of time we spend on our technology, simply being exposed to all of the global news and the heartache of the world, that is draining. And then something like a pandemic rolls through and global strife and war and economic hardship and what it is, we have to tap deep into our reserves to rally. And we have rallied. Way to go, everybody. We have rallied. But in order to rally, you spend your reserves. And at some point, you have got to replenish those reserves. Okay, We've got to build a new resilience for our recovery and our joy and also to prepare ourselves for the coming days. Jesus knew that we would be living through times like this. And with compassion, he gave us counsel, he gave us wisdom for this very, very specifically. And he also had some pretty sober words of warning. I wanna to go to two of those with you in this first session. I wanna start in Luke 21 and then go to Matthew 25. In Luke 21, Jesus gives an illustration. And this is after he's been kind of riffing on the trials of an hour like this one. He says, notice the fig tree or any other tree. When its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, and he's been talking about the signs of the end of the age, he says, you know that the kingdom of God is near. And he says, watch out. Don't let your hearts be weighed down. And I'm like, whoa. What? There's, there's a way for my heart not to be weighed down? Say more. He says, don't let your hearts be weighed down by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. He says, keep alert at all times. And then he offers this. He says, ask me. Pray for the strength to escape the madness of this time. Pray for the strength. Ask God for the strength. The word for strength in the Greek is kataskuo. It's only used twice in the New Testament, and it is phenomenal. Kataskuo means to prevail against, to overcome, to win. It is a victorious strength. The other time it's used, it's Jesus. It's in Matthew and he's talking about the launch of the church into the world, right? The coming of the kingdom of God through his people in the world. And he says, and the gates of hell will not 
prevail against it, will not overcome my people, okay, the body of Christ, will not catascuo. So it's an overcoming strength. It's a victorious strength. It's frankly a combative strength because Jesus understands it is the forces of hell that are trying to overcome the human heart. And he wants to imbue us with a supernatural resilience to handle these times. Okay, so this is one of the first things I want to say as we enter into our search for that strength. This isn't gutting it out. This isn't sucking it up or doubling down. This isn't like military training or those outdoor leadership courses, which are good and have their place. This kind of strength is given to us. That's why the psalmist says, God is the strength of my heart. That's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what we're after. We're after this supernatural resilience that is imparted to our humanity by the living God. And then in Matthew 25, he tells a very important parable that I think is particularly critical for this moment in time. And first, notice where it comes. So Matthew 24 is the famous Olivet Discourse. This is where Jesus is riffing on the trials of the end of the age, the wars, the rumors of wars, the famines, plagues, the hatred that comes into the world towards the end, the loss of heart. Okay, so he goes through all that, and then he tells this story. He says, then the kingdom of God will be like 10 bridesmaids. Then meaning at this time, okay? 10 bridesmaids who took their lamp and went to meet the bridegroom, okay? Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish didn't take enough oil, but the other five were wise enough to bring along extra oil. And the bridegroom was delayed They all became drowsy and fell asleep. (laughs) You know what? I appreciate his honesty about the bridegroom taking his time, okay? At midnight, they were all roused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out, meet him. And so all the bridesmaids get up, prepare their lamps, and then the five foolish ones say, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop, buy some for yourself. But while they were gone to buy the oil, the bridegroom came and they all went into the feast and the door was shut. And you're like, holy cow. (laughs) It's a really unnerving story. People are left out of the kingdom of God. They're left out of the feast because, what? They ran out of olive oil? So throughout the Old and New Testament, oil is the presence of God. Okay, this isn't about your pantry. Okay, oil represents the presence of a living God. And so they would anoint the priest with oil in the Old Testament or a new king. Jesus is the anointed one. That's what Messiah means. Because they are anointed with the spirit of a living God. And the parable of the ten bridesmaids is a story about people who either caretake their reserves of the strength and resilience of God in their life and people who don't. And I think this is our hour. I think we are in the hour of the 10 bridesmaids. I think he gave us that parable at this time. He says, after, you know, all these things are happening, the war and the famine and all that, as this story is racing towards its climax, here are these two groups of people. And some are being very intentional. They are planning for resilience. They're planning for the caretaking of their life in God. And then there's a group who are just taking everything way too casually. They're kind of winging it. And they run out. And we are seeing people run out. I'm getting emails, texts all the time of wonderful people, solid, mature lovers and followers of God who are tapping out. They're thrown in the towel. They're just beat up from this age that we're living in. They're wrung out. They're disappointed or heartbroken. And they're just saying, I'm done. That's that camel 
thing, that's that human resilience thing. You do not want to push your soul to the point where you just run out. You run out of God. You run out of strength. You run out of the resilience to even care to carry on. And so this is where we are, I believe, in the world. This is what we are going to chase in this series is the wonderful, marvelous oil of God, the presence of God, the inner strength that God provides to any human being, every human being, who will ask him for it. And the first step is that we turn our hearts back towards the living God. We begin to love him with our hearts. And the reason that that's important is in 2 Chronicles, it says the eyes of the Lord rove to and fro across the earth, looking for those whose hearts are fully given to him so that he might strengthen them. I love that. I need that. And you see the orientation is the heart. The orientation is our affection, our attention our gaze, right? We want to be the five who are making plans to caretake the presence of God in our life by loving him, by giving him our attention, and by asking him for the catascuo, for the resilience and the strength that we need for the madness of this time. So here's what I want to do. In each session, I want to teach you some things, show you some things, make some observations. But then I want to pray with you, okay? And not just the quick little Jesus be with us prayers. I want to take some time right now and at the end of each session to really linger in some prayer, tapping into maybe a resilience that you haven't experienced before or maybe something you knew in years past, but life kind of well, it just wears us down, right? It drains us of it. So we're going to do this right now. If you got your cell phones on you still, put them on airplane mode, right? No distraction. And we're not going to rush through this. We're going to take our time and settle in to ask God for the strength that prevails, to imbue us with his presence, with the oil that we need, okay? It always begins with loving Jesus, with loving him. Because yeah, the world introduces a lot of ambivalence into our hearts in our relationship with God. And we begin to slowly pull away, sometimes for very understandable reasons. We want to turn back in the simple act of just loving him. We're just going to settle into this and begin with, I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you. And we just linger there for a moment as we pull our attention in and our wandering hearts. I love you. I love you, God. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, God. And we ask him for resilience. God of all creation, God of the thunderstorm and the waterfall, I need your strength. I need the strength that prevails. I don't want to lose heart. I don't want to give in or give up. And so I choose you. I choose you above all things. I give you my allegiance. I give you my undivided love. I choose to be single-hearted towards you. Lord Jesus, body, soul, spirit, heart, mind, and will, I pray for resilience. I pray for your strength. Fill me with your overcoming strength, your victorious strength. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, strengthen me. I need strength of mind, strength in my mental life. I need strength of heart, strength in my affection, strength 
in my emotions. I need strength of will. I need the strength simply to choose not to give in. I pray for the strength that allows me to escape the madness of this world and all that is coming against the people of God in this hour. Fill me with your mighty, glorious resilience. By faith I receive it, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. It's a beginning, and I think you'll find as we journey together and as we practice these things that we can be the five wise bridesmaids. We can be the smart ones who are planning for and intentionally bringing along extra resilience for this hour in which we're living. This is our story. This is our moment. And the world will either take you out, the enemy sure wants to, or God will lift us up and strengthen us as we turn again to him and seek it from him, with him, and love him.